Uh, here's the thought today. This is for everybody, not just for mothers. For everybody, here's the thought. Are you slipping? Okay. All right? I want y'all to hear this. And I'm going to take my time because I want you to really get it. Are you slipping? Now, when I say slip, y'all know what a slip is, don't you? And if you slip the right way on the right thing, you can hurt yourself, can't you? Mm -hmm. I've slipped on the ice before. And that ain't a good thing. But are you slipping? In Thessalonians, there's a scripture, and it basically said that God has called us not unto uncleanness, but he's called us unto holiness. Okay? Now that doesn't change. Would you say that, do you think that has changed? From the beginning of time until now, has that changed in it? Would you say that that scripture has been pretty stable? Amen. That God doesn't change? That what he said 10 years ago, he still means it? Yes. What he said 50 years ago? What he said to your parents and grandparents? Do you think it's still about the same now? Amen. Yes. It's about the same. That's the one thing about God's word is that God's word doesn't change. God's word is stable. Amen. And it doesn't change. Even when trend changes, uh -huh. God's word is stable. Mm -hmm. It has the ability to stabilize you. And the way in which it has the ability to stabilize you is through sanctification. Mm -hmm. Being filled with the spirit. Yes. Reading the word. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So we're talking about being stable. We're being, talking about being consistent. Mm -hmm. As we see the lives of everyone, there should be something stable about you. Mm -hmm. Even if you change your hairstyle every now and then, there still should be something pretty stable about a Christian. Now, as Pastor said a few weeks ago, he said, now, something's wrong when you're able to put your religion down and then go and do something that's ungodly. Uh -huh. There's something wrong with that. Amen. And what people need to see is stability with Christians. Amen. We need to be stable. Yes. We don't need to be slipping, All right. if that makes sense. Amen. Remember I said to you, are you sleep, slipping? Uh -huh. Are you slipping? Now God has called us to be one thing. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. He's called us, and, and, I, and I don't care how many Bibles you read. When you read that same scripture, and that scripture is uh, Thessalonians 4 and 7. When you read it, and you read out any Bible, it's going to say the exact same thing. That he has called you to be holy. Right? All right. All right. So we're talking about stabilization, sanctification. We're talking about being godly. We're speaking of holiness. Yeah. Walking a certain way. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, I also read in Thessalonians when Paul was writing to them, and he was speaking to them, this is what he said. He said that the tempter comes to tempt you. He called Satan the tempter. Remember, all power is in God's hand. So the things that the devil do is trickery. He'll tempt you. Oh, he'll bring it right by your face. Even when you say you ain't looking, he's going to bring it by. All right. And he's a tempter. Mm -hmm. That's what he does. And so many times, we yield to temptation. All right. Yeah. Some of us, probably by accident, 
in the wrong place, wrong time. But I've also seen where some attempted and they fall into temptation because that's what they want to do. Amen. And people have said that to me. Some people, uh, I appreciate them because they're just honest. Uh -huh. They just said, you know what, that's just something I wanted to do. Amen. The devil didn't tempt me on that one. That's something I wanted to do. I liked it and I went and got it. All right. But Satan is a tempter. That's what he does. And I want y'all to understand this too. Sometimes he doesn't hit you over the head with a barrel. All right. Sometimes he brings things in so slowly that you don't even know it's there. And then you look back and you say, huh, five years ago, some of the stuff I'm doing now, I wouldn't have even did. Right. Two years ago, we were going to church every day or every Sunday. But now, we're missing here and we're missing there. Sometimes I'm a little tired. So, well, now I don't go to Sunday school like I used to. Right. Church, that's called slipping. Right. You're slipping. All right. You're slipping back yeah. into what you said you weren't going to do. You're slipping into it. And that's what the tempter does. He brings it in so smooth. He's a sly. Mm -hmm. You look up and you're so far from God you don't even know how you got there. Mm -hmm. I want each of you today to think about where you are today. Today. Where you are. Yeah. I want you to think about whether you have slipped. Think about if you're slipping. Mm -hmm. Think about things that, you know, let's, and let's just go with something real simple. Let's say at one time you were so humble before God that you got down on your knees and prayed before you went to bed. Mm -hmm. That's something simple, right? Yeah, you get down on your knees. It's a sign of humbleness unto God. And let's say you ain't got bad. I know some of us can't get down there because our knee, we get down there, we can't get up. We may have bad knees. We may have our aging. Sometimes those things like that. But I'm talking about if ain't nothing wrong with you. Ain't nothing wrong with your knees. And you used to get down, put your head down. You used to pray before God. You used to be humble. Now you find yourself laying in the bed talking about, Lord... Uh, Jesus. Sheer laziness. Amen. Amen. I've been there. I've been there. I don't mind saying I've been there. And you get lazy in things. And you don't do things like you used to. But I want you to give some consideration for this. I want you to begin to, to think about those kinds of things. To think about things of where you were and where you are now. Yeah. Part of what I believe God wants from us as a people it's for us to get better and better. Amen. For us to live holy. For us to be godly. Amen. For us to move forward. A pro pro what I call progressiveness. Mm -hmm. If you're falling back into sin or back into ungodly things. Or just back into things that you don't think you ought to be in. Mm -hmm. I want you to think about those things. And think about how it is, can I get back on the right track? Get back where I need to be. Be humble. Pray without ceasing. And how it is that we can get back where we need to be in God. Yeah. Because if he's called you out of sin and out of unclean things into cleanliness and holiness, then that's where he wants you to be. Amen. If you find yourself doing things that you shouldn't do, I want you to count it up. Count up the cause. Look at it. Look at where you are. See if you're slipping. That's what this is about today. It's about you getting back where you need to be in God. If y'all will go to Thessalonians, fifth chapter, Thessalonians. Uh, first Thessalonians. Mm -hmm. First Thessalonians, fifth chapter, 
Start at the, let's start at the 15th verse. Because I want to give y'all some word. But I still want y'all to remember. Are you slipping? Amen. Are you slipping? Now I want this word to go in you. 1 Thessalonians 5, 15. See that none render evil for evil mm -hmm. unto any man. Even follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. I tell people this all the time. Don't you render evil for evil. That's right. That's right. Let God do the punishment. The, yeah. Revenge is his. Don't you go out. A lot of people can't understand that. But I'm reading it to you here in the Word because I want you to understand this. Don't slip. When somebody says something wrong to you and then you go back and say, oh, I'm going to get them. That's slipping. Amen. That's slipping. Because here in the Scripture it says, do not render evil for evil. 16. Rejoice evermore. What does God want us to do? Rejoice. Rejoice. It's a great thing of what God sent Jesus and he did for us to connect us back to him. We ought to rejoice on that if nothing more. When, when Christ was raised with all power in his hand, he has all power. Is that not enough for us to rejoice over? Yeah, 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 yeah. He says rejoice evermore. Yeah, yeah. That means continue to rejoice. Right. Yeah, some things are going to come in this world. Some things are going to come in the flesh. But you can still say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Yeah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Let praise forever be in your, on your lips. Mm -hmm. Then he says here, pray without ceasing. Uh -huh. If you're not in a prayerful, prayerful spirit, you're slipping. Amen. In everything, give thanks. Amen. For this is the will of God in Jesus Christ concerning Me. you. Yes. 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 I'm going to say that again. Give thanks in all things, in everything. If you're not giving thanks in everything, you are slipping. All right. Yeah. Glory to God. Quiz not the spirit. When the spirit of God come up on you, you may not even be in the right place. But guess what? Oh, hallelujah! Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. And, and I'm going to tell you, if he get it on you just right, you ain't going to be able to quench it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because you know what? If you be shaming him, guess what? Oh, All right. It's going to come a time he's going to say, uh, I don't know him. I don't know her. No, them not. Don't quench the spirit. Praise him. Despise not prophesying. A prophecy. A lot of people despise that because they're scared that you're going to tell them something. Don't tell on them. Don't tell on them. But it said despise it not. Yeah, that's right. If you don't understand it, shut your mouth. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. We ain't got to speak that's against right. everything. Some people speak against everything. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Just shut your mouth. Yeah. Right. Maybe you had not got into a place where you understand. It says despise not prophesying. Prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. Hold fast to what? That which is good. But that's so plain. That is so plain. But why is it that we want to hold fast to other stuff? We still remember what somebody did in the second grade and those kinds of things. Move on past it. Amen. Hold fast to that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. He don't do a half job. He says holy. And I pray God your whole spirit 
and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So he wants to preserve you as a beautiful flower. That's right. Beautiful flower. So when the Lord comes and he sees us, and oh, he sees that beautiful flower, yeah. that holy, yeah. hey, Jesus, hallelujah. You. Amen. You. Can you see anything more beautiful than that? Mm. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. Amen. He calls you. He will do it. Amen. He's going to preserve us. Uh, brethren, pray for us. Greet all the brethren with an holy kiss. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Yeah. Amen. Amen.